turn. What goes around, goes around. Hey, turn. Turn music up. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Goes around, comes around. What goes like, like, like. Like goes a cycle. Everything that comes around, goes around. Uh, fuck. Guys, so I'm in the middle of uh, doing the, the soul dye here on these uh, Cherry 11s here. And I just wanted to kind of go over some quick tips and, and recommendations for you guys. One thing that you guys want to make sure that you're using is actual soul dye that is not paint. Because I've seen a lot of people say, hey, you know, you, can you paint my souls this color and that color? Like anyone can paint your guys' souls whatever colors that you wish. But um, the more important thing is, is it going to last? And a lot of people think that because they saw it on Instagram or whatnot that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to last. But it's actually just, it looks great for, for Instagram, but at the end of the day, it's going to end up cracking. So, uh, what I wanted to show you guys today is just a couple of methods that I use. When I'm using sole dye, guys, I always flip the shoe when I'm working on the side, back up this way. And, and, I, and I use strokes going down like this. And the reason why is that way, it'll avoid hitting the actual midsole portion there because once you hit that midsole guys it is over with the the dye kind of seeps in and sucks into any, any portion of your shoe that you touch it with so be very gentle in these areas and take your time as you guys can see i'm just kind of gently taking my brush and stroking down because when you stroke down then it avoids the midsole, you get good proper coverage of the whole area, and, and, and gravity is working with you. You see, so I'm just kind of going through the motions, just making sure that I'm not getting too close to that midsole and I'm just grazing that fine line. definitely do not want to touch the sole dye because I've done that before and then all of a sudden now I'm touching the top of my shoe and I've got fingerprints all over my shoes and that's not a very uh, productive way to, to probably do your, your customs so I, I, I would recommend um, waiting till the, till the end when you guys are almost done with your custom and do your your sole dyeing stuff uh, that's exactly why I'm doing it here at the end because I'm, I'm using my pinky finger here and I'm just putting it against the black um, sole on the bottom so that way it helps kind of give me a little bit more balance even putting the shoe down here helps a lot because then you can adjust and make sure you're not hitting portions where you shouldn't be hitting again keeping the shoe this direction here will also help me because I know that as I'm painting on this side that like dye is not leaking onto the midsole or anything else on the other side because gravity is pushing all of the dye down so that's important guys keep the shoe placed low until you know that you need to work on a set, uh, another area then readjust Even I, actually, I'm, I'm even still intimidated of this process because I don't think that I have enough experience to do it, but there's only one way to do it, and that's to, to do it. <laughs> and then you gain your experience. Do the, the, the bottom of the shoe down. I don't care about the rag that's underneath here because now it gives me control. I can actually use my brush and I know everything is nice and stable. I avoid hitting that midsole when I do that. And I'm just trying to spread nice, light, even coats. That's the, your, your main purpose of this, guys. Nice, light, even coats. Don't worry about getting a... This is your first round in, guys. Your first layer. Don't worry about getting too close to that edge. Try to get as close as possible without really trying to get into the that end portion
Now I'm putting it down here just to stabilize a little bit, guys. And it gives me an ab ability to move the shoe around and work around the shoe instead of having the brush trying to have, have to do all the work. I can guide the brush. And that's exactly what I'm doing. By the way guys, sole dyes can be very tricky because they'll, they'll look like one color like right here. They look almost, I want to say like a light purple, but as th as this sole dye starts to dry, then you start to see the red Im immerse from it. So um, don't, don't take uh, this for the final product yet guys. We've got, we've got quite a ways to go until it actually dries, settles out. And I'll show you if there's any residue afterwards, how to clean that off, and, and then we'll have a finished product, guys. Um, I think that the first time I did this, I, I was freaking out because I was like, dude, this is not the right color. And then I just kept going through with it anyways, and I noticed that as time passed by, it started to brighten up and look like the same red as uh, the, the, uh, that you guys see on the breads, the bread 11s almost the exact same tone so it, it became a nice like a cherry colored red and so I was, I was happy because I had no idea why or how I messed up but it just it just naturally kind of came about so you guys see how slow I'm going on this tip here because all I do you know is make one bad move and it's gonna end up getting on this patent leather, so you gotta be very, very gentle with that area. I think the patent leather is kind of like the key to these shoes here. And once you get a stain on that, it's like, it's game over. So you guys can see I'm just doing like a back and forth motion right here and all I'm doing is just making sure that all the the dye is dispersed. The main goal guys is again you just want to glaze the dye on the top. You don't want it to be too heavy. You just want it to be enough where you can see that the dye is actually penetrating into the the plastic portion or the icy portion of this legend blue. As I'm layering it with more of the dye I can start to see that the color is coming in crisper and crisper and I'm, I'm getting now that cherry red that's starting to form. It's becoming more of a fuller color, okay? As you guys can see, the, the sides are still a little glossy. That means that they're still drying. Over here, and I just caught it right now, is a perfect example of something that's been saturated a little too much and it was just about to catch on my, on my midsole here. So that's why I tell you guys, that's what's gonna end up happening is that the, the dye is so thin that what it ends up doing is it slowly starts to creep up if you have your shoe backwards. So that's why I'm just making sure again that you check the sides, you're brushing them down. You, you check the sides, you brush it down, check the side, brush it down. And that way you're sure that you're not gonna get that, that over excessive dye all over your midsole and have a lot of extra work to do. So again, I'm just going through making sure that spots are touched up. If I see that there's a little less dye in spots that need to be a little bit more saturated, then I'm gonna go ahead and drop them on. If I see spots that look blotchy now, I'm starting to go back in, grab a little bit more dye, fill that in. The most important part of this part of the sole dye, guys, is definitely this outer portion. So, if you guys are gonna mess up, try your not try your best not to mess up on this side. Because once they're on foot, this is the side that is actually displayed. The inside, the bottom, 
even the back is not even really shown that much. But obviously you want to make sure that there was a nice consistent dye. Take risks cause scare money froze money And the money make the honey's moist toes numbing Fight or flight right but I never chose running Fight or art or flight board with the snow bunnies If you my homie I'ma let you hold something Peace to the kids, learn to grow sunny Days far away, no shade bro Shark tanks full of great white mangoes I don't blow dough, need to save those You was freezing to death, would you stay cold? With a can full of gas and a handful of matches And a cash stack, you can turn into ashes